So my question is about a distinction between supporting and enabling, supporting someone energizing their rockets of desire, in my case as a healthcare professional, when does it become enabling? You're really going to like this discussion. So you heard us talk already about step one is the contrast helps you to ask. And step two is source answers. And step three is you get into the receiving mode so that you can receive the impulses and so on. So once you are really good at that, so that you are doing what we're playfully calling step four, which is just mastery of step three, what often happens is you receive an impulse in the receptive mode that is coming from source who is utilizing you as a messenger or a cooperative component to be part of someone else's asking. You become the answer to their asking. Now stay with it just a little bit. So we've talked to you about your dearly departed who have made their transition to the non-physical. And sometimes you're suffering, you're grieving, you're missing them. And then in a moment of not doing that, because you just got distracted for a moment, a bird will come and appear right at your feet or even on your shoulder or on the back of your chair or right over there. And we say that often those birds who are so plentiful and who are so in the receptive mode can be inspired by source to come and visit you to bring that message of well-being to you. Well, you often, without maybe even knowing you're doing it, are that bird who's in the receptive mode, who's receiving that impulse that causes you to be in perfect timing at the right place and the right time with the right interaction to offer. Now, feel how good that feels and acknowledge how often that has happened to you. As compared to being someone who's focused upon someone's suffering or plight or problem, who is gonna help them think their way out of it, who now is focused upon the problem, so now the problem's activated within you, and while some thoughts might come to you, it's nothing like the thoughts that come to you when you are in the receptive mode. So we would say unequivocally, and without exception, that anyone who's in the receptive mode when the inspiration comes is offering true service to another, who is helping in such a wonderful way. What was the word you were comparing? Enabling? Enabling, yes. As opposed to what? Support in service of amplification. Sometimes support and enabling are sort of the same thing. You're wanting to support them. I see that you cannot do this for yourself and therefore I will assist you in doing that. And that carries a message that I see you cannot do it, which amplifies the message that they've already got going in themselves. So we would put both of those sort of on the same side of that equation and we would call what true service is, is that inspired impulse that comes from being tapped in, not only to your inner being, but to theirs also. And often, you see, this is the most important thing to understand for someone like you, who is so wanting to be of value and of service and uplifting to others. Unless you are tapped into that, you really don't have anything to give. And so when your dominant intention is to be tapped into that, when you are tuned into that so that you are receiving the inspiration, often your inspiration, because now you're inspired by your inner being and theirs, you're like the bird that's being sent. But they're not ready to receive the full answer yet. If you tried to give the full answer to them or the last step into their manifestation, they wouldn't be ready to hear it. So you have to be satisfied in receiving what they're ready for. Ooh, did you hear it? A lot of people who are of service in this room and you want to take them all the way home right now, whether they're ready or not, come with me to your healing. Come with me. Come with me to the improvement that you're looking for. But if they're not ready for it, you got to understand that they've got source energy that's already been offering the inspiration to them and they haven't been ready. They haven't been ready. And if their own inner being can't get through to them to take them all the way there, you're not going to get through to them either. So you have to be satisfied to be willing to be satisfied to give them the satisfaction that they're ready to receive. 
to be the messenger that takes them as far as they're ready to hear, but doesn't need them to go further than they're ready to hear because they can't. Oh, did you hear that? That is the most significant conversation we've ever offered relative to how healers and uplifters can best serve those that you're wanting to uplift. You got to be satisfied if they're not ready to hear. You got to be satisfied that you're ready to hear. You got to be satisfied that you're in the receiving mode so that you might have good timing and saying certain things. You got to be satisfied that you're going to be at the right place at the right time and that they'll meet you there. You got to be satisfied with that. And then you got to be willing to let that be enough for now because that's all they're ready for. And then since you're still in the receiving mode, more, 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 it's going to be a little hard to hear because as those who want to uplift, you want to take them all the way from their problem, all the way to the full manifestation of their solution. You do. But sometimes there's going to be 20 or 30 or 40 of those like you who are birds fluttering in, who are just taking them this far and then this far and then this far and then this far. See it as a team experience where lots of cooperative components are on this path. We said to you all some years ago, maybe in the first week that we were flowing through Esther in this way. If you don't care who gets the credit, you can be a lot of value to a lot of people. Helpful? Yeah. I, <laughs> so the, I have a particular patient, and yeah. I've been treating her for free for many, many years. And there are a lot of other people who treat her for free. She f feels herself to be very debilitated. And she has people that will shop for her and clean for her for free because she has no money. But when I feel her pulses, they're strong. If I were to give her a hug, it's a strong hug. And so I'm wondering, am I just enabling this story of how yes, weak she is? <laughs> or if I just see her as she truly is and be in alignment? Here's something that we really want you to hear. And as you hear this, it will set you free. Sometimes it feels like when someone needs something and you see yourself maybe as the only one for right now that can help them get what they need. You may supply them with what they need, but if it's coming from your awareness of their need, then it's not coming from your full alignment. And while you may supply some physical thing that they need, they will never feel satisfaction in that. The only place that satisfaction comes from is when anyone has a desire that they line up with. So when someone has set themselves up where you do that for me and you do that for me and you do that, and all my needs are being fulfilled by you and you and you and you and you and you and you, and you unless that person has a desire that they are coming into alignment with, they're not satisfied. And the fact that they're not satisfied keeps their needs so active that they keep roping other people into filling it. Isn't this a powerful conversation? And you all do it to each other is what we were talking about by rather than your impulse being alive and well within you, the impulse to satisfy your own impulse and instead the impulse to please you and you and you and you and you and you and you, that's what perpetuates that, you see. So the thing that you want most in assisting others, set aside all of the physical requirements that they have and all the needs that they may have because that's all well and good and we want you to be as helpful, all of you to be as helpful as you can. Hold as many doors open for as many people as you have time to do in a day. We're not trying to discourage that at all. But what we are saying is, if you can understand that they will never be satisfied unless they have a desire to which they are not offering opposing vibration, then you're perpetuating or enabling their split energy. And that is the most disability that anyone will ever have. It's the furthest from satisfaction that anyone will have. Haven't you seen that in their children? Don't they want to do it? Don't they want to do it? Until you convince them that they can't do it well enough and you need to do it instead. And then that's a whole other thing that comes on. But you want to do it. You want that pure satisfaction. We'll say it again, satisfaction in the way that we are talking about it and the satisfaction in the way that you mean it from non-physical, the only way anyone can ever be satisfied is this life causes them to put something in their vortex and then they figure out a way to receive the inspiration so that they can have what they are asking for. 
And when somebody else does it for you, it is not satisfying. And that's why the hunger and the thirst just goes on and on and on and on and they become more demanding. They become less appreciative. That's why, because they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied because you are depriving them of any hope for satisfaction because you are servicing them in the action orientation rather than from the energy orientation. This is as good as a conversation ever gets. Talk about a leading edge conversation. We just answered every question that you have about every relationship you ever had or ever will have. <laughs> if you want people to be happy around you, they've got to be satisfied and they can't be satisfied if you're stealing all their thunder by doing all the stuff that they want and need for them so if they're disabled that's just fine they still have energy flowing they still have moods they still have alignment or not alignment you see so you're wanting to perform service you've been taught what your duties are you're trying to serve with a smile but you're getting pretty fed up with this so you enter with resistance or you enter with resentment and so they receive nothing nourishing from you they get the physical behavior but nothing nourishing so they're never going to be satisfied because you can't nourish another they have to tap into that feeding tube on their own it's a vibrational thing you might not have liked it as much as we did but we've never liked anything more <laughs> Well, it sounds like I need to fire this patient. And I'm wondering how I can do that in an empowering way. Well, get ready to be ready to be ready to be ready. In other words, you're not ready to do that because the momentum is other. And so it will come to you because now, you see, one of the wonderful things about conversation, one of the wonderful things about poking at a problem is that you launch more rockets of desire. So your vortex now has more definition on this subject than it's ever had before because of this conversation. So your inner being now is standing in a much clearer place than ever before. There's much more activation of this vibration. And the law of attraction is responding to that activated vibration in a stronger way than ever before, which means when you're in the receptive mode, you're going to hear louder and differently. You're going to be more sure of what to do. So don't leave here saying, what did Abraham say? What am I supposed to do? Instead, leave sort of knowing what Esther came to this morning. I can figure it out as I go. I've got plenty of time. If all of the arrows are gone, I'll probably recognize some of the places that I am. In other words, I can figure it out as I go. You'll figure it out as you go. You'll figure it out as you go. But the thing you have to keep in mind is, and this is the thing that's going to be so wonderful for you, so liberating for you, you're going to discover through this experience how to follow your impulse. We want to shout it, <laughs> but we won't. Well, maybe we will. How to follow your impulse for your satisfaction, not somebody else's desire for you to satisfy them, because you can't. Satisfaction only comes from their alignment. We did shout just a little. Esther sometimes translates our enthusiasm with volume. Me too. Enough? Yes. Really, really good.